Mr. President, save this country from coronavirus. Because this virus is coming to this country. And it's coming to this country because of our greed for money. Mr. President, listen to the cries of our people. We are talking at a time, Mr. President, that coronavirus is nothing to joke about. And yet we still allow the Chinese to get into our country the way they want. Mr. President, I want you to imagine the following. Even before we get into the, some of the effects of this, um, the virus we're talking about, Mr. President, our schools are too crowded. Our churches are too crowded. Our buses are too crowded. Our markets are too crowded. Every place in Kenya is too crowded. Imagine just one person with this virus. What will happen to an entire, entire population of this nation? Mr. President, we cannot afford to look and allow this whole nation go to waste, Mr. President. We challenge you to take quick and immediate action, Mr. President. Tighten all our ports, because this is what happens to other nations. United States of America, United Kingdom, France, India have already tightened their ports and they are making sure that foreign nationals, especially those coming from the nations, which are already victims of coronavirus, are subjected to thorough scrutiny, Mr. President. Who are we? not to do this, Mr. President. We challenge you to rise up, rise to the occasion, and say no. I, I know we owe these people so much, Mr. President. I know we owe these people more than maybe we're not even, more, more than what we can think of paying anytime soon. But Mr. President, we are not going to allow ourselves to be colonized again by these people in the name of debts. You know what, Mr. President? This is how colonization started. And it could be an opportunity for the Chinese to start colonizing us using this terrible disease, Mr. President. We will not afford to treat ourselves. We will not afford our, our medical system and the, the, the entire health system cannot handle this disease, Mr. President. We challenge you. And not just on this matter, Mr. President. We are asking you to rise up to the occasion and also take full charge of the nation. The nation is at mess. Everything is going, it seems to be going in the wrong direction, Mr. Dear President. So, as an angry and a concerned Kenyan citizen, we are asking on behalf of many other people that rise up to the occasion and take charge of the full country, take charge of the healthcare system of this country, take charge of the security of all citizens of this country equally. Mr. President, yesterday we allowed China's Southern Airline to land into the country. It landed into this country with 239 passengers on board. And I want to take this opportunity to commend the Ministry of, Ministry of Health officials at Jomo Kenyatta International Airport. Because we, when this airplane landed at JKIA, these staffs stood their ground. And they said, no, these passengers were not getting into the country. But a phone call came, Mr. President, from I don't know who. And these guys were allowed to disembark from the plane. They were basically allowed into this country. Over 239 passengers. They were screened. And none of them exhibited signs and symptoms of coronavirus. But Mr. President, that's where the problem begins. We all know that the incubation period for coronavirus in this in, uh, in, in the, uh, for the incubation period for coronavirus is 14 good days. That's why when this virus broke out in China, the United States of America chartered three planes to go and collect, to go and bring their citizens back to the United States of America. And once they were in the United States of America, these people, they were almost a thousand, I think, 900 something. These guys were isolated for 14 good days. When they were screened, none of them exhibited any sign and symptom 
of coronavirus. But the United States being a caring leader with their caring leadership decided not to risk the lives of fellow Americans. So after 14 days, these guys were tested and several tested positive. Remember, when they were brought from China, they were screened there. When they landed in America, they were screened. No signs. Then these guys were quarantined for 14 days. Some of them were found to be positive with this virus, COVID-19. Mr. President, we allowed 239 people, passengers, from China to Kenya. They landed at JKIA. Then their temperature, I don't know any other, other, I don't know any other clinical measurements were taken. And then the next thing, these guys were allowed to go outside there. Do we have the ability to quarantine Kenyans? The image you see there is in China. That's how they quarantine their people. That's how they isolate their people. Do we have that ability? Do we have that capacity? Because I, as I speak here, a relative of mine who is doing his postdoctorate degree in Huan, in China, is stuck in that country. He's stuck there not because of anything, because the Chinese government has paralyzed public transport. And he was telling me that the reason they are stuck there is because the government isolated them. This event, I mean, this virus was detected when, they were in, when the school was on holiday. So the people in college right now are foreigners. And they've been quarantined. They can't move anywhere. But here we are, as a country, we are allowing 239 Chinese into this country. I'm not saying there was no Kenyan here. But my problem with this arrangement, Mr. President, is that we have Kenyans who are stuck in China. And these Kenyans, they have people they call parents, people depending on them people they love. The government of Kenya cannot bring these people home. I would be comfortable if out of these 239 passengers who were brought to this country, half of them were Kenyans who were stuck there. So that if they came into the country and the virus detected on them, it would be fine that a, Kenya, a Kenyan came with the virus. But we've neglected our own Kenyan, Kenyans in China, but we are bringing people in this country in the name of greed for money. I don't know any spectacular thing that 239 people were going to bring to this country. I don't know. We don't have the ability and the capacity to quarantine these people. So, let's look even at housing. How many houses, I mean, how big generally on average are our houses and how would they allow for self-isolation? Um, the truth is many of us live in houses where you cannot self-isolate. So when you say that, it means you're out of touch with your population. Mm -hmm. That's lack of emotional intelligence, That's but it is it. also lack of transdisciplinary intelligence mm -hmm. because um, housing statistics from our Kenya National Bureau of Statistics should tell you that on average our houses are this size. Mm -hmm. Therefore, where are we self-isolating if you are just to use one, in, one discipline? Look at the health sector. I think one headline here talks about eight beds. Mm -hmm. And like, like Dr. Mwenja said, 11 beds. Mm -hmm. 11 beds. Mm -hmm. Now, if it's 11 beds, is that enough? Really? You know, and, and what is the quality of those beds? Are they really isolated? And it's, it brings in question a lot of questions. So in our current situation, I think the challenge is for our leaders to rise above money and selfish motive mm -hmm. and think about 
people. So, you know, you asked earlier, are they really the enemies of the people? Mm -hmm. It looks like they're the enemies because mm -hmm. they're completely unaware or ignorant of how people feel. Mm -hmm. If not for anything else, just the emotional feeling that we could actually get infected should tell you perhaps this is something we should not be doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we don't have capacity to manage this situation in this country. We are lucky as Africa because so far these are the statistics. 82,000 people have been diagnosed with this virus. 2,800 people have been killed by this virus. In Africa, only four ca three cases have been detected, have been confirmed. The first case was, in, was uh, detected in Egypt. I don't know how they manage, they are still managing the situation. The second case was diagnosed, was confirmed in Algeria. And the latest case was confirmed in Nigeria. And Mr. President, this is why you need to take charge of this thing. Because in those three cases, none of them came from China. The Nigerian man came from Italy. I think the Egyptian one also came from Italy. I don't know where the guy from uh, Algeria came from. And none of them still are not Africans. Mr. President, prevention is better than cure. If you can do anything which can help us prevent this thing, it's, it's going to be good for us. Coronavirus is basically a, a respiratory droplets which can spread when you cough and when you sneeze. That's why it's, as, it's advisable that anybody should have a mask around their face, basically on the nose and the mouth, so that they don't spread it. When you sneeze, when you cough, the droplets... The respiratory droplets are prevented from moving from your mouth. I was expecting the government of Kenya today to provide each and every employee, anybody stepping at JKIA with those masks. I saw a picture of a taxi driver driving Chinese when they landed with that uh, China Southern Airline. The taxi driver, he was carrying some two passengers there. And he had the mask. I'm not sure whether the, the Chinese had the masks. So the government was put it mandatory. And Mr. President, there's nothing hard with you learning from President Donald Trump. Donald Trump personally took responsibility took the initiative about this coronavirus and he addressed the nation. I'm here to hear you, Mr. President, address this issue of coronavirus. So far, I've not. Maybe I was asleep, but I've not heard you talk about coronavirus. And Donald Trump appointed his vice president, Mike Pence, to be in charge of coronavirus. In this country, the Minister for Health was just hard claiming, was hard claiming that it would be discriminatory to stop chi chi China, chi Chinese planes or planes from China from landing to Kenya. While he's saying that Kenyans are stuck in China. Mr. President. Learn from Donald Trump and take charge of this thing. Uh, I've just received another briefing from a great group of talented people on the virus that is going around to various parts of the world. We have, through some very good early decisions, 
decisions that were actually ridiculed at the beginning. We closed up our borders to flights coming in from certain areas, uh, areas that were hit by the coronavirus and hit pretty hard. And we did it very early. I, a lot of people thought we shouldn't have done it that early, and we did, and it turned out to be a very good thing. And the number one priority from our standpoint is the health and safety of the American people. And that's the way I viewed it when I made that decision. Because of all we've done, the risk to the American people remains very low. We have the greatest experts in the world, really in the world, right here. The people that are called upon by other countries when things like this happen. We, uh, we're ready to adapt and we're ready to do whatever we have to. Learn from Donald Trump. And I want to say something about Uganda. When the news about this coronavirus broke out, the Minister for Health of Uganda called a meeting on how they were going to go about this. And I remember her addressing the press and explaining that for them, it would be good for them to sustain Kenyans in China while they are there. Because risking bringing those people here might risk the lives of other Ugandans. As, as, much, as much as that was appearing to be pedestrian, personally, I believe that there's no, there's no reason for Kenya to continue, for Kenya to continue refusing to allow Kenyans in China back, but then again, allowing these Chinese planes to fly around. Remember, major airlines talk of uh, American airline, uh, airline talk of Air France, talk of British Airways, talk of Delta Airways, airline talk of Qatar Airlines, Airways. All those stopped or suspended their flights to China. In East Africa alone here, Rwanda Air stopped. Air Tanzania stopped. Kenya Airways stopped. Then why should we stop going those countries, but then the airlines from those countries are coming to this country? What's the need? And are we prepared to deal with this menace if it will hit? Because this airline, this airline carry, carrying three, I mean, 239 people arrived in this country yesterday. There's an incubation period for 14 days. In the next 14 days, if a case will not be confirmed in this country, then we must thank God. But before that, let us not allow any new instance to happen. And this thing is now getting complex because it's now not only China. The cases reported in Africa so far are not from China. So how are we going to deal with this menace with the airlines from Italy and these other countries where the virus has been confirmed. How are we going to deal with it? So Mr. President must think beyond money from China. That loan, that loan can be suspended and start thinking about Kenyans. We will not be able to sustain, I mean, we will not be able to fight this virus if it will hit. As I speak today, the government of Kenya cannot address simple malaria in Elgeo Marakwet here. There was an outbreak the other day. People died. They could not sustain, deal with it. As I speak here, in Kisumu here, this hospital has collapsed. So how are we going to deal with the coronavirus? When you can't deal with basic health issues like malaria? I don't know what you think. But I want you to just do a favor with this video. Just drop a message to President Uhuru Muge Kenyatta and state what you think the president should do to help save this country from this virus. Because this virus is coming. It's coming. There's nothing we are going to do. The virus is coming. Send, drop a message for President Uhuru Kenyatta. And if you're bumping on this video for the first time, I want you to take a second or two and hit the subscribe button so that next time you produce a video like this one, you get notified. And to, to you, the subscriber, I want to continue. Thank you guys for your continued support. 
without your support this channel would not be here today thank you guys so much and just like i keep on saying give the video a thumbs up and if you can share this video thank you guys and please may you have a good day bye bye